James. Raph. Ah, uh, timing, hey? Timing's everything, they say. Yeah. Yeah. The classic down round ritual. You've all heard about it before. We record on a Monday. We make some bold claims, spurious claims. Yeah. You know, um, we work off the data we have. And that's not just true of down around, that's true of life. Yeah, that is true of life. Life life is about translating data into action. Yeah, that's right. And you can only operate you can only operationalize the data you have. And what typically happens in down around is that we come in fresh faced, babes in the woods. Yeah. As we've discussed ad nauseum, we are the first people to comment on things in the world due to our time zone. In the world. That's right, Australia. Australia. We come, we come hot off the weekend. Australia has limitless alpha due to our position vis-a-vis the Greenwich Mean Time line, right? Indeed. I mean, yes, New Zealanders are technically ahead of us, one hour ahead, but yeah. they, to date, they have not taken advantage of that advantage. Yeah. Uh, we so when it comes to price discovery, folks, we're at the front lines. We're on the absolute front lines of price discovery. Uh, and that's reflected in the ASX, the most important stock exchange on earth. Why are you laughing? I'm laughing because typically the ASX will trail. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Um, no, but, but anyway. obviously what we're referring specifically here to is that we decided to go off on our subscriber-only episode about VR, AR, Meta, you know, what's happening, and then... The Vision Pro. Vision Pro, and then, of course, the day before the episode came out, of course, uh, oh, 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 Ryan. <laughs> Meta announced some dramatic new future for their augmented reality product to the point where it became really clear, if it wasn't already, that they're orienting more or less their entire business future. Like, this is Act 2 of Meta. Yeah. Everything else has been faffing around the air. So point being, if you if you are paying your hard earned for down around premium, and you were like, hmm, these guys are twenty four hours after Meta's released Orion, these guys are talking about AR. I'm going to get some hot takes here. Well, we're here to correct the record. Everything we said was still true. Everything we said was true. Down around dubs all around. But also, the premium episode was a bit of a faff around Omnibus where we talked about a whole bunch of different things. And I think the meta announcement about their Orion glasses is a good opportunity for us to actually kind of return to AR and wearables and glasses. Because we have done an episode about it in the past and we've talked about it a fair bit. But this is a really good time to get back into it because... I think it's fair to say that all of a sudden, and I think it's it's a product of virtual reality and like VR goggles and things like that really not getting off the ground. Yeah. Plus the failure of an array of half cooked um, AI, AI devices, devices yeah. plus a bunch of other things that are sort of percolating in the air. That all of a sudden everyone seems to be in alignment with the answer to that classic down round question, what comes after the smartphone? What's mm. the product? Everyone seems to be talking about, oh, it's smart glasses. Yeah, the hype is smart glasses. And we've so, said we've talked about this in the past, but it seems like the energy is like there now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would say, okay. Without even going so far as to say uh, pick a winner, for example, despite the fact that I believe that I did pick the winner of smart glasses a long time ago. Did I not? I, I Did I not say, say I actually, I, I'm into the Meta Ray Bans. You did, you did say that, but you, that's actually quite for quite what you said. I'm into them. I don't think that's really like that's a, a ringing endorsement. <laughs> um, this is the future of all technology. I believe that's the same thing. Like if uh-huh. you can't read between the freaking lines, what am I doing here? No, no. But um, I think it is an interesting question at the moment, and we'll get into exactly what's happened in AR. But a lot of different companies have picked a path right when it comes to kind of the future of computing yep be it apple vision pro throw the meta quest in there though um various augmented reality devices be it v- various, you know, like, snap or like headphones or yeah the rabbit vo- blah, blah 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 there's all these the pin vo- ai pins yeah vo- voice interaction stuff everyone's trying to figure yeah, out yeah amazon's doing voice we're talking about you know robots this that and the other everyone has kind of like picked a lane 
or not exclusively, they can all pivot, but like there are a bunch of different theories on what the future of computing looks like. And I feel like now is a great time to take stock. Yeah. And just, and also just a, a reminder as to the economic and market forces that sort of, because we've talked about some down around, but for anyone who's sort of maybe a recent new listener, figuring out why are we even trying to replace the smartphone? Yeah. You know, a, a rectangular block of glass that shows me content. That's the perfect device. Yes. Uh, well, as as we've kind of talked about, the smartphone is running out of steam. The new iPhone is not all that crash hot in the sense that it's not that different from the one that came out five generations ago. You've just purchased a iPhone 16. Yeah. And you came from what, an iPhone 14 or 13? Yeah. 13, yeah. 13 I mean, to 16, three years. Nobody, nobody disputes that it's a better product, but is it absolutely, indisputably rocking your world? This is one of the least impactful phone changes I think I've ever had. Yeah. Um, and they, it was in some ways that's great. It was like they've obviously worked out the transfer into a new device, like a, yeah. a little bit smoother. But in other ways, it's like I can't, I just haven't noticed. You know, I went from 120 hertz refresh rate to 120 hertz refresh rate variable. Okay. Yeah. The camera's slightly nicer. Totally. Um, but um, yeah, but when, and you might be asking like, why do they need to find the next smartphone? The point is growth, right? Growth. You can't just keep, making the same revenue every year. You're a public company. You're expected to grow, which is kind of hard once you're a $3 trillion company. Yes, and as we've opposite- pointed out time and time again, like actually, like in, in the kind of, if you take a step back out of the pushes and pulls of capitalism, does it matter if a company makes $3 trillion, <laughs> if a company makes you know $200 billion in revenue one year and the next year makes $190 billion, is that not fine? You may be asking, and it's like, it depends. It depends. And also, you know, <laughs> the nature of the world we've created is that if Apple went down from being a $3 trillion business to, let's say, a $2 trillion business, <laughs> uh, that would severely impact the entire economic development of the world. <laughs> I mean, the entire Chinese economy would presumably the, the, like the would significantly. Would collapse. Then their demand would... Uh, would go down then obviously a demand for Australian iron ore for example yep yep the the Ontario teachers pension fund would collapse <laughs> and then obviously like potentially you know the leadership of China would like be needing to find another angle in order to continue public support and then they may want to address the breakaway province <laughs> they, they, would invi- they, would, they would invite they would invade Taiwan the oceans would boil with blood you know it would It'd be really unfortunate. So in a really short way, it is so important that Apple goes from being a $3 trillion company to a $4 trillion company and then beyond. So as a result, we're talking about fucking wearing computer glasses. (laughs) Why you will be wearing computer glasses. So just... As we talk about this, just remember the background fuzz is we don't give a shit about any of this. We just need to keep the gears of history turning. <laughs> so thank you for subscribing. <laughs> anyway, back in the zone. Glasses seems is in the air. And, you know, for those of you who are premium subscribers and know that we talked about this for a little bit last week, yes, we pulled the trigger just before Meta announced the Orion glasses. And when mm. I say announced... I mean, they demonstrated the Orion yeah. glasses. It's not a product. It's sort of like them showing off, this is kind of what we're working towards. The subtext being this as like a marketable, purchasable product is probably like, what, three to five years away or something. Yeah, they reckon about three years away. It's um. So as a reminder, they have the Meta Ray-Bans, which are literally just you know nice Ray-Ban glasses that have a couple of cameras in them. The most recent versions have some more features around like audio and voice control and things like that, but all pretty rudimentary at the moment. And by announced, they obviously like picked a bunch of kind of key journalists to demo them to the point where, and, and some that they didn't demo them with. I just Googled Meta Orion because that's like the obviously research. Um, and of the top hits on Google, after Meta, you have, you know, um, the Verge saying hands on with Orion, Meta's first pair of AR glasses. CNBC hands on with Meta's Orion AR glass prototypes. Slate, please don't make me wear Mark Zuckerberg's ugly glasses. Yep, they obviously didn't get a hands on. No. Uh, <laughs> um, so the idea 
of the Orion glasses, as we said. It sounds like, as a reminder, the way Meta tells the story is that they released the Meta glasses with Rayburn as like a experiment, a test product, sounding out. What if you could put camera on glasses? Wouldn't that be like a unique sort of camera format where you could film yourself going about your daily life mm. and blah, 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 blah. And then, oh, oh my God, we learned from the way people use them that actually this could be a platform. Yeah. You know, this could be the way that you engage with like LLMs and AI, which yeah. we're also working on. Yeah, you look at your fridge and say, hey, work out a meal for me. And then, you know, your glasses can start telling you like, oh, you could make it a lovely curry. Yeah, because we're, you know, the uh, multimodal AI stuff that's coming out where you can interpret what's in front of you visually. When I said that I'm kind of into the, the meta Ray-Ban glasses, as an AI device, I genuinely believe that because I, as I said at the time, I think the glasses are perfect. If you wear glasses, big caveat being you don't wear glasses, I wear glasses. Yeah. And as someone who wears glasses every day, I'm like, yeah, actually, I could see that it being handy as like, yeah, I'm not using it all the time, but if I want to, if I'm looking at something and I want to say, can you translate that for me? Can you translate that um, A4 piece of paper that's been pasted up on the wall here? It's a pretty crazy ass picture, but it's in some characters that I can't recognize. Yep. I'm probably not going to get my phone out and bother doing it, but if I'm looking at it, I might yep. as well ask the AI in my glasses or what have you. And I'm sure that extends to like other things, right? I actually do think that glasses are a very good vessel for this AI interaction thing. Because let's be frank, we all have, as we've talked about, AI in our pocket and we can take a photo of our fridge and we can take a photo of any flower or anything and say like what is this help me with this and we just don't really do it because it's just a little bit too much of a hassle but if it's right in front of you maybe but it's will. right there if I can touch it on my on my maybe will. head maybe but the, the the point is that Meta's thing is they kind of they were working on the metaverse being like the horizon world shit that Mark Zuckerberg has been plugging away at for years they were mm. working on AI this was just like another social device that they were thinking about. Keeping in mind that, you know, Snapchat had the spectacles for a few years mm. prior to that. And then they suddenly it sort of came to them that, oh my God, this could be the platform in the future. I think it's probably, I think it was probably slightly less serendipitous than that. I imagine that. Well, be- Zuckerberg said specifically in this announcement, they thought they'd have the ability to kind of project holograms in front of you before they'd worked out the AI thing. So there, I think, did come quicker than they. Yeah, imagined. I mean, the, the LLM stuff has, I think, surprised a lot of, a lot of people, and obviously, Meta was playing catch up with that a bit, and still are. Um, but anyway, Orion is clearly them making, putting a line, a, sort of their um, flag in the in the in the sand, and saying, "This is it. This is what we're working towards." Yeah, which is which is interesting because you know, obviously, they've got their they bought Oculus a long time ago. A lot of the technology from mm. Oculus obviously goes into this, but it's interesting that they're suddenly like, okay, maybe like that fully locked in VR experience, which is what the Meta Quest is. Yeah, that might just be for gamers. Yeah, exactly. Which should explain exactly what Orion is. I would describe it as Wayfarer Chungus. Wayfarer Chungus. Yeah, in the sense that it's sort of like fat chunky glasses. Yes. Why, for fat, like, chunky wayfarers? That's right. Yeah, I, I, I see it. It's AR. I won't, so when we say AR, again, I'm now just like, for whatever reason in my mind, I've got it. We're just speaking to people who are listening to Darren for the first time and are just at a loss as for to some, what to think. I don't know why I, this is the episode they've all started <laughs> tuning in on, but it could be. I don't know. Um, if you are, thank you for joining us. Um, consider subscribing to Premium. Anyway, they, AR glasses, let's be frank, these things are pretty cool. So they have squeezed into them these projectors in the side of the eyes. It's not glass. It's um, a silicone thing, like clear, a clear, it's, it's clear glasses. You can look through them translucently, but at all times you can, they can kind of shoot these projectors into the side of them to bring up, you know, what you'd imagine. The same thing as Vision Pro, same thing as, as VR, like menus, and you can have phone calls with people uh, and little screens kind of pop up. It's the AR that we all wanted, right? It's, it's it. like it's a heads-up display on well, life. It's literally the dream of Google Glass, which yeah. came out over a decade ago at this point. And that required you to kind of like look up to the right because it was like it only had like a tiny projector yeah. up in the corner of the glasses. And as we talked about in Dan Rand before, the biggest barrier there was, I mean, technology was part of it, but like it was the social layer where mm. it's kind of like people thought that you were a sicko pedophile pervert for wearing them. <laughs> yes. And 
that probably remains true to a certain extent, but you know, a lot has evolved in terms of what's acceptable to do with cameras and technology and phones and what have mm. you over the past decade. So, you know, people are probably and, you know, in in Meta's defense, there was a lot of argy bargy about theoretical problems with having glasses with cameras on them. Mm. But like I've not real I've not heard of any incidents mm past just like the general vibe that people are like, I don't like that. Mm. Uh, so maybe that's a suggestion that in practice people don't actually care that much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, given we're used to being filmed everywhere. I think I've said this before. There's yeah. cameras on every street corner and everywhere we go and you're filmed and photographed and God knows what. I So I actually think the barrier to like, it, getting used to the it, idea that everyone has glasses it, it, at all cer- times. It's certainly uh, the barrier is in a much different place than it was 10 years ago. Yeah, but point being, so these glasses, they look pretty cool. They look like really big... Ch- like, if someone was wearing them, you'd notice they are not normal glasses. No. But these are not for sale. Like no. This is a... Um, well, again, we were talking about it, uh, the Snapchat thing being a developer kit. This looks way better than the friggin' Snapchat glasses. Totally. Let's just be frank here. And you would have... You, I mean, frankly, you would expect it, considering yes. the resources. <laughs> considering they've pumped something like 78 billion American dollars into these things, basically. Yeah. Into Reality Lab, which Intimately. includes the metaverse and blah, blah, blah. Point being, they're basically... They're, Originally, they were thinking that these were going to be like a V1 that would be for sale, but it cost them about $10,000 to make these things. Um, they're not quite there yet. So instead, it's like a concept car, basically. They've, they've made them in enough numbers that they can give them to press and show people and that they're around as for reviews and to, to check out and whatnot, but they're not for sale. And what Zuckerberg said is what was originally going to be V2 they're hoping will be actual V1 for sale. And they're expecting it to be for sale for, quote unquote, something around the price of a of a premium phone or laptop. So, yep. you know, two to three grand you yep. expect. Yeah, yeah. And again, just as a reminder, without getting too deep in the weeds, Meta's, I guess you could say, their part two, their act two as a company or whatever, one of the driving motivations is that Mark Zuckerberg never wants to be in a position again where Apple dictates to them what they can and yep. can't do and the amount of money they can make. Mm. Uh, and a lot, and a big part of that is that we have to own our own platform that Apple can't dictate. They've tried that with MetaQuest, which was an acquisition of Oculus, their VR stuff. The consumer appetite for VR is not high. Mm. It, it, obviously, Meta is not selling as many quests as iPhones or any other device get sold. Mm. That's one. But also, like, you know, PlayStation keeps trying to do PlayStation VR. Mm. And, you know, keeping in mind that gamers are the people that buy VR by and large. Mm. And, and like, HoloLens as well. Like yeah. It's like a, yeah. But you can't even coax PlayStation gamers to buy the PSVR. It's just not happening. Because, frankly, people don't see a huge amount of value for it. We'll talk about the Vision Pro in a bit because there's an interesting thing there is a separate point but point is yeah zuckerberg wants his own platform vr was or like vr slash ar quest was going to be it but i think it really seems like he's like actually that's it that's mm. the one we got we got to get going yeah and they are trying to in their like promo videos of the of these ar glasses which by the way they look cool as hell i'm gonna be frank it looks cool not not sorry not wearing them yeah. Wearing them looks but weird as hell. The UI looks good. Yeah, the UI looks good. The technology itself, as I said, same as Vision Pro. Like, as someone who likes technology, as likes gadgets and yeah. gizmos. You're a gizmo guy. I'm yeah. a gizmo guy. I'm like, whoa, I'd love, to, I'd love to chuck them on my head and just kind of click around some menus. Gee. Well, you said last week in our premium episode that your favorite part about the Quest 3 you own is faffing about in menus. <laughs> Navigation, folks. Well, which, could, which which should be an absolute insane bear signal for Meta that none of the content that they've made and spent billions of dollars on you're interested apart from just clicking around and moving moving menus around. Yeah, but but moving menus around my lounge room and stuff is quite nice. Um, regardless, so flagging, yes. I, I I don't want to just be like, oh, negative Nancy. Like I think it looks cool as hell. Um, yeah, yeah. But the in the, all of their promo videos. They literally are like, here's Zuckerberg in 2016 saying, um, the future is glasses that sit comfortably on your face and that you can interact with the real world and into the thing. Like they, they're really trying to reframe that they didn't also just rename the company Meta and like spend kind of the last five years talking about being in VR in the metaverse and like 
you know, being in virtual meetings and being in virtual Paris. And like, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. The whole no, plan the not... entire time, no, 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 was AR. Well, yeah, I see. <laughs> it is, in retrospect, it's funny. I was struck by like the Bloomberg article about, they, they wrote like a piece that was about the Orion announcement. And they were, they were like, Mark Zuckerberg's investment in the metaverse has been vindicated, mm. essentially. And it's one of those things where you're kind of like, mm, yes, in the sense that he pumped... As, as we just said, tens of billions of dollars into reality labs and that side of the business. And re- it, the output in terms of technology has obviously been strong. Mm. When you use the MetaQuest, you're dicking around in menus, <laughs> you play some of their tech demos. There's nothing in there, in my view, having like played a few of those things where you're like, oh my God, everyone must have this. No. Nothing even reaches, comes close to that level. But like the individual bits, like how the like hand tracking works yeah how like the navigation works how like it scans all, your room and all stuff. the room scanning all you can see all the individual pieces where you're like yeah you see the room scanning like that was prob- probably cost billions of dollars <laughs> to develop or you're like and the, i've just got a freaking washing basket the hand there tracking, and just like scanning yeah, my wash. i'm playing with like this horrible robot game which turns my hand into like a robot hand <laughs> and, and you're like this is like the the most cringe thing i've ever seen however the underlying technology here is obviously amazing. <laughs> uh, that came out of Rowdy Labs. Yeah. Um, the fact that, like, the weird Mark Zuckerberg fucked up featureless, smooth faced selfie in Paris sent the stock tumbling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just, just wiped off like $100 billion of value in a day or whatever. The great thing about the fact that the word metaverse actually doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Aside from, like, more. More of all the stuff that's been going <laughs> yeah, on. Accelerate, right? Exce- you yeah, got to accelerate. Now the metaverse means that when you look at a banana, it says the word banana above yeah, the banana. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know how you're on the computer all the time. Well, imagine more. <laughs> that's the metaverse. But the fact, you know, they rebranded it. Whenever when they rebranded to the metaverse, they were 100 percent pitching that it was like exactly what we talked about. You put on goggles. You're in this 3D space where you can be anybody and go to work. Right? That go was to like work. literally what it was. It was you're like because everyone's working office. from home now. No one the office is dead. The CBD is in ruins. Commercial and don't be wrong. Commercial real estate isn't in a great place. Not great. And like we're you know we're in a twilight zone kind of between here and there, and we're not really sure what the future of work actually looks like. But regardless, the idea at the time though was no one will ever be working face to face again. The Corporation of the future is no flags, no borders, yep. no sugar. You wear your goggles, no carbs, and you, and you get put in a picture. No woman, person, no cry. <laughs> a picture perfect representation of a, an office. Yeah, exactly. And then with we'll, whiteboards and shit. Exactly. And that that obviously like the but, world is a mo- little more complex than that. No, it is. But, uh, that, but that was the pitch, right? That was the meta uh, pitch. That, that was when when they talked about we're now a metaverse company. That's what they were talking about. Yeah. But now because. It was such a vaporous word that meant nothing. They could be like, no, actually, the metaverse is increased connectivity via like this digital layer that's over the top of everything. Yeah, you're still embodied, you're still in the world, but like you can receive information, interact with it with hands free. And to be fair, I think a version of that is the future, pending obviously a few things. Like this weird cybernetic thing where it's just like all the systems integrated with like your senses, but like you're still very much embodied and of the world, but like the. Because it's funny, I read that book by that guy, Matthew Ball, who wrote, like, The Metaverse and Why It's Coming. Mm. And again, he was very much talking about, like, being in virtual worlds, being in these sort of, like, Horizon-ish, Roblox, Minecraft-ish worlds. Yeah, where you worlds. where you can, you can pay money for, for digital land, which people would do it. Yeah, you, you, you buy digital land, you, go, you spend your time getting on a digital train and being part of, like, a fucking Ford activation <laughs> in the Metaverse. <laughs> It's not. It, that was what his whole book was about. But at the same time, like you know, back then people were like, "Oh, you're on your phone all the time. More of your more and more of your communication is via group chats and social media and whatever. Everything's media by online. You're on Teams. You're already in the metaverse. You're in Those the people kind of like won the argument. Yeah. <laughs> but as a result, the word is sort of meaningless. Yeah. But you can. It's great for Zuckerberg because he can be like, actually, it's AI. It's LLM. It's that thing we weren't even... Yeah. Obviously, they were working on it. Like, Llama didn't come out of nowhere, Hmm. but it wasn't 100% what he had in mind. It's vaporous. I mean, yes. Llama was not what it... Was not the metaverse. Like, that was... 
But and maybe they could have been thinking, oh, generative, you know, now, worlds or whatever, maybe. But now, like, di- now, now, like, a llama-powered digital assistant that lives in your glasses is part of the metaverse. Yeah, of course. Anyway. Um, but regardless of the name, I do think that this technology, and don't me wrong, I know I said exactly the same thing about the Vision Pro, and I still think there is some... I, I, was, I, was, I was wowed by the Vision Pro, and I'm wowed by this. Maybe I'm just too naive. No, but this is... I think this is the future insofar as like um, we've said this years ago. Or I've said this years ago. The killer feature is the person whose name you've forgotten and it says their name over their head when you see them again. Well, did you see that the Apple Intelligence TV ads they've been doing? Like they're advertising it on like the RAF feature. It's so like they're at, it's bizarre because they're advertising a product you can't even use. Yeah, it, it is weird that they're... They completely fumbled with that like... There's no way it's not a complete failure internally. Like, there's got to be people being screamed at about this. You can't be advertising a feature that someone goes down to the Apple store and buys the thing advertised in the ad and can't do the thing in the ad. So it's... It's crazy. It's an ad where... uh, you got to watch it because it's completely your use case. It's like... It's Bella Ramsey, who's, like, in The Last of Us show, has her, like, going into a cafe, and she looks around the corner, and a guy is like... (gasps) hey and she goes oh and like disappears around the corner and goes siri what like who was that guy that i had a meeting with last week uh at this location and it goes that was blah 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 and then she goes around the corner and she's like oh hey that person's name yeah that's what you were talking that about that is my that is my use case that's the killer feature they were they listen- are they were listening but that's what i want in my glass that's what i want my glasses to do because there's so many of you out there no offense that i've forgotten your name <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not remembering anyone, anyone's name. There's a guy that I keep running into, and I've run into it. He's like a friend of a friend, and I've run into him. He may be listening. I don't know. I've run into him. If you are, what's your name? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is your name? <laughs> so I've met this guy probably. I'm going to say six times over the past six years. I probably meet him once a year, on average, once a year. <laughs> okay. And every single time I say, Charlie, good to see you, mate. And every time he's like, my name's not Charlie. It is. <laughs> And I go, I'm so sorry. I don't know where I got Charlie from. And even now as I talk, I don't remember what his name is. And every single time I see him, I go, Charlie, right? And he's like, no. And he says something completely different. And I think based on the last time I ran into him, it is actually pissing him off. <laughs> you so, reckon at, at time number six is when it's pissing the, him off? Unfortunately, the only thing that's going to break this impasse, it's not me learning his name. <laughs> it's, a pa- it's a pair of damn smart glasses <laughs> that put like his real name floating above his head in neon letters. So an interesting thing is like, as I said earlier, different companies have kind of gone in different directions here. Obviously, Apple were kind of like, right now we can't do the pump a hologram at the glass, which is what Meta seemed to have achieved. And by all accounts, like... They only kind of realized that actually this is going to work like four months ago. And, and, and it was a, a massive challenge, this idea of putting holograms or, you know, pumping a projector at these, yeah. at this kind of clear surface and making it appear in front of you like a screen is an absolutely like a massive, massive challenge. And again, another reason why they said like these things cost 10 grand is because the yields on these glasses is just nothing. You know, we talk about TSMC, the, the key thing is that they can make these amazingly complex semiconductors and the yields are just incredibly high. Like that's their core competency is like, yeah. if, you, if you can make a million of these things with very few of them being bung, Meta are pretty, like the CTO was just like, the yields on these things are dog shit. Like we, so many of them just don't work. Yeah. Um, which is why we can't mass produce them at this stage. Point being, but it's interesting though, because like Apple obviously would have been looking at that. I'm sure they are looking at that. And I will say, I'll just flag, it's unfair to, to compare the Vision Pro, which right now you can walk into a frigging store and buy because no one else is. <laughs> yep. um, and versus a demo product that isn't on sale and they're saying may well be on sale in three years. It's not fair to compare. But regardless, Apple looked at that concept of like shoving a projector at some li- uh, at some normal looking, normal-ish looking Chongus glasses uh, and said... We're not going to go that path. Instead, we're going to put friggin' two 4K displays right in front of your eyes and then have super high definition video streaming the real world back onto like HD or super HD 
um, screens in front of your eyes to try and simulate the idea of AR, right? Where it's like, and I, at the time I was like, oh, I see, that's genius because you'll never be able to pump projectors at a clear lens. At the, and But Apple went that way, which is why the Apple Vision Pro is so freaking expensive. Yeah, totally. I mean, to just to underscore the fact that you know, our thesis is now that everyone is coalescing on this being in the idea. So mm-hmm. today, I mean, as we record on Monday, Power On, which is Mark Gurman's newsletter at Bloomberg, he's the Apple guy. Uh, he basically wrote a story talking about Orion. So the headline is Meta's new headsets show Apple has lost the way with the Vision Pro. And they're talking about the new Meta Quest they announced as well as Orion. But interesting tidbit, which I think, if you look at it, gives an indication of what's coming down the pipe. It said Apple seems aware that it needs to rethink its approach to headsets because, again, the Vision Pro is not blowing the roof off in terms of sales. We knew that it wasn't going to because it is a bit of a proof of concept and a, like a developer magnet rather yeah. than a final thing. But they said, as, a, as of now, this is German, as of now, the company's Vision Products Group is evaluating a few different options, including the status quo route, which is you know, keep building Vision Pros and then try to take that insane technology I've been building and like uh, focus it down to a less expensive version. You know, have the Pro version, Mm. have the regular version, maybe have an Air or something, you know, get that going. Then there's the smart display route, which is ripping all the guts out of the Vision Pro, just having it be a display and have it linked to your iPhone. Mm. So your iPhone is the actual machine and this is just like an extension of that, which is kind of what we were talking about last week in terms of just, just link it in. Then it was the smart glasses route, which is like, let's just make our own Meta Ray Bands. Yeah. Um, which let's Apparently be honest, they've been talking about. If Apple did it, they would sell like hotcakes. They're gonna look Pe- cool as hell. People would buy Apple like Meta Ray Bands. Well, like, I mean, as we've said before, no one was wearing headphones that were little white things with a weird stick hanging out of your ears, like five years ago, yeah. six years ago, whenever it was. That and when they first came out and. I was an early adopter. I bought them, but they looked weird as hell. They look weird, and you, you can argue they still do, but they're so integrated into the culture. Yeah, I mean, if there's one thing that Apple can do, and they do well, is that like, well, people want to show that they're, they're wearing a, an Apple device. They're a luxury brand. Yeah. They get aesthetics. They get fashion. You you can signal by wearing. If Apple makes some friggin' AR glasses, it doesn't matter. A, you know, they're going to look good enough. They're going to look cool enough to be cool. Right, like to, to become cool, they get they may not be cool immediately, but they will muscle their way into yeah. being cool. Yeah, that's just the nature of it. The other one is the AirPods route, which he talks about, which is like forget the glasses, let's just whack cameras on the AirPods. Mm. I feel like they're going to do this anyway, mm. like that's going to happen. And then the last one that was described is the Holy Grail route, which you were just talking about. You know, standalone augmented reality spectacles, high performing lenses, no, no. battery yeah. system, like the whole shebang. As in like a glasses form factor. Yeah. I don't think that that's going to come to pass. And we should probably be clear on the, on the Meta Orion. Their glasses, you have a big puck thing, like about the size of a phone, slightly slightly larger than a phone, basically, that sits in your pocket. That's the, the computer. Yep. Um, and around your wrist, you have like a wristband that senses your fingers and stuff so that um, it can, you know, you can make gestures in order to interact with the augmented reality. Yep. Now... What does that sound like? A puck thing about the size of a phone and something on your wrist like a watch and then glasses. Yep. Obviously, Apple have two pieces of that puzzle. Yeah, it's already there. The puck thing that Meta have in their in your pocket um, obviously is like the modem, the processor. There is some processing and stuff that goes on in the glasses themselves. Apparently, like all the tracking and the visual computation or whatever happens in your glasses, but the actual like OS runs on the puck, blah, blah, blah. And like a thing around your wrist is, yeah, yeah, tracking these movements. Like Apple have all of the pieces of that puzzle. In fact, I'm sure Apple's puck... Will be an iPhone. (laughs) Yeah, with a friggin' A18 processor or whatever in it is going to be pretty good. The thing on your wrist is going to be pretty good. You know, like it's... They've already got like all of these pieces. They've got the pieces, yeah. And, And um, And even... And this is a down round exclusive. I haven't told you about this. There was a rumor about a few months ago, like... um kind of four or five months ago, about Apple looking to redesign the watch strap. And everyone was kind of like, that's weird. Like, why would... You know, you can... On all of the Apple Watches so far, even the Ultras is a little bit wider, but you can basically use any watch strap with any watch. Yeah. It's been the same watch strap. And there was like rumors about them using some kind of magnet thing, kind of like a mag safety 
that they were looking at redesigning and I was like it's going to be like what is the benefit here of changing that yeah, yeah. like that's just going to piss everyone off it's going to ruin the kind of ecosystem of watches might even stop people from upgrading if they've got heaps of different watch straps and this, that, and the other. This now, Meta's wristband has these EMG sensors all the way around, like all the way around your wrist, which is what allows it to track. Uh, it's, a, it's really freaking cool technology. They acquired some company a few years ago that had this technology where it, it measures like electricity, like the in your in your wrists in order and interprets it into gestures. So it knows whether you're like putting your thumb and pointer together your thumb and middle finger together incredibly accurately and it's better than say the vision the vision pro just uses cameras to kind of track your hand movements you can have your hand in your pocket or behind your back or whatever it doesn't matter if you've got this little wristband on but it relies on these sensors being all the way around the wrist yep to me and this is the down around exclusive all of a sudden the idea of apple thinking about changing the connection on the watch strap makes a lot more sense in that context because they need something that's able to uh, have like an electrical current yeah, go true. all the way around. And something like MagSafe is what they're talking about, like a magnety system makes perfectly sense if they're exploring that. Which like, again, flagging articles like that Bloomberg thing being like Apple's way behind. They've gone in the completely wrong direction, which is what I said. Like it does seem like if this Orion stuff is the future, which to me, it seems like maybe that is easier to not have to project, you know, 8K friggin' vision through like 18 different cameras on these screens in front of your eyes, maybe that is the future. You would assume that Apple has been kind of thinking about this and maybe, or maybe not, this watch strap change makes sense in that context. Throwing it out there. That's very wise. Maybe that's true. You know, it's an opportunity for them to be like you, to get the full AR experience you need, kind of every bit of our kit in a way that feels a bit more organic than the current thing, which is like, you need to get a Vision Pro plus this like ugly fucking battery pack. That- yeah, that's the other thing. That is what that is crazy about the Vision Pro. That for those who don't know, you need to have a cable connecting to a battery pack in your pocket or like a wall outlet. But like to use it in a mobile way, yeah, you got to have this, which apparently was a, a matter of great consternation internally, and a lot mm. of people were like, a lot of the design people especially were like, that is so fucked. Yeah, but also if it's if it's just a battery, that's even worse, right? Yeah. That, that's obviously the, like that they want at some point to put it into the glasses, but the meta thing where it's like, make it a computer seems way smarter. Oh yeah. But again, the flip side being, why do you need all that crap in the actual glasses themselves? You've got a frigging phone. Yeah. Well, like literally the best portable computer. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, cause I would say the number of people who have a vision pro and don't have an iPhone would be minimal. <laughs> so you've got two kind of like cutting edge, three nanometer process computers which are most likely operating far beyond the edge of what you need for use yeah yeah that are just syncing a few pieces of data via the cloud well exactly (laughs) like oh they're putting increasingly advanced processes in the iphone Mm. like the only people who are using it are the ones who are playing top spec games yeah or people who are like I don't even know using some like the pro video stuff there's really not people that are using the capabilities keeping in mind that like an iPhone you're the 16 or whatever mm. is probably on a processing level more powerful than like a top spec computer from like 10 years ago oh absolutely even more recently maybe yeah. and you're not doing fucking half the shit on it it's it, it'd be way better than an Intel Air yeah and well, totally and then why can't you divert some of that towards providing the guts of a headset that has AR or like glasses or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's definitely the future. Which I think brings us to like, if you humor me, James, humor me, James, humor me, listener, you, listener, you might be you might be listening to this in your meta quest right now. You might be listening to this in, in on the car with your family, you know? We're getting into the school holidays. You, you could be sitting on a plane. Yep. You could have just with, downloaded with, it. With, with your Apple Vision Pro on, listening to this, and then a giant cinema-sized screen in front of you is just like the podcast art. <laughs> yeah. It's just the Overcast app, and it's just started it randomly at this point. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Why not, at the end, just speculate on what that future looks like, which I think is a bit of fun, because you know the thing that comes to me immediately is like, okay, firstly, let's talk about floating names over faces. See, and- I'm... I'm s- you're I'm, sus on it? I'm sus on like that being... Well, I don't know how it would actually play out. Well, I mean, on your phone right now, if we take it the Apple concept, like it's already doing that, right? Like you can... 
it already sorts out all of your photos That's and true. tags yeah, and automatically yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and yeah, recognizes yeah. the faces and you know has names and you know if you have contacts in your address book that have photos it's like okay you know this is your mate paul it's your mate dom you know yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. um so like there's that but this is what i want to get to then there is like okay if you use say a crm like a hubspot or whatever hubspot is automatically looking at someone comes into your crm and they've got it their um using their work email address and it'll immediately tell you all the details about the company. They've got this many employees, you know, just kind of, it has a bunch of data about every company. You might have a little, a few details about a person. It might just be their email and it'll enrich the contact. It'll be like, well, we already know that like we're some frigging data brokers or whatever. And we already know that a, the company they work for has this many employees and has this much revenue. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. this person is a male and they're this age and whatever, because it just enriches yep. that data because, you know, based on all of the crap that people do, is that kind of... I Like, I see that... I can't see Apple being the enrichers. However, like, that feature of just like, well, we've got this whole database of people's faces and a bunch of data about them. And so if you walk around the place, there'll just be people in that database and either it's a subscription or it's a feature of friggin' Microsoft or Facebook. You know what I mean? Like, an, Or a bunch of people just have public profiles on Facebook or public profiles on LinkedIn whatever it is and it's just like yeah this is this is michael burberry from linkedin yeah, yeah this is this is timothy goida from from linkedin here's what he does and here's what people are oh, what? Here, yeah. here, here's, here's the ratings and reviews of him as a as a character oh, okay. you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah I, I, I want yeah i i feel like that's a rubicon is very evil to cross although i feel like is it a rubicon i mean i i, I can imagine some like marquee feature that apple announces or like Google with whatever they do in this space or Meta or whatever announces this feature where it's like in some geofenced event that you set up, it's like a net like a business event or a networking conference or whatever. Everyone that you look at pings up like and they've opted in. They've opted in and there's some like rich data set that appears above their head. Mm. Um, or it like gives you little Grand Theft Auto style like mission markers to go visit someone that meets certain criteria for what you're looking for and shit but i want like the the thing that would have to because the funny thing is is that like this is not crazy out of the realm speculation like we have the fucking tooling you know like um uh clearview ai and pim eyes and all those websites that like collate people's images across the web yeah and like coalescing data like it's completely not science fiction to imagine a world where it's like you put on glasses and it can like identify a person by looking at them well yeah and as we've discussed before like you can already pay certain companies to like put in a, a number plate of a car and be like here are all of the places that car has been in the last month yeah yep. like i so like why not then attach that number plate to a person to a person's identity face, yeah, or yeah. whatever and like go, go to it, it appear like i don't know if anybody has watched mtv's catfish <laughs> wonderful program but like they clearly have a partnership in that show with my wife really likes it so I've seen many many episodes but like they have a partnership and this is part of their like quasi scripted faked ritual of like finding the catfish mm. and their identity but there is a real website that I assume they have a partnership with that's called Pim Eyes yeah yeah I've put myself into it it's, yeah. it's killer it, yeah you, you can put just put a photo a random photo of yourself it doesn't have to be a photo that's already out there yeah just put, put in a random like or a few random pictures I can't remember whether they let you do a search without paying for something now. But point is, when I did it back when it was definitely a little bit more open, it just starts throwing up pictures of me from online yeah. that I've like never seen before. Mm. And like it often it's like weird club photos yeah, from, club like, photos. Yeah, from exactly. like 2011 where I'm in the background of something. Yeah. And I've never seen the photo because I was never tagged in it. Mm. But like, it's a completely destabilizing experience where you're kind of like, what the fuck? Well, That's absolutely me. And I remember that night, but I've never seen a photo from it. Yeah, yeah. No, like, no. I mean, that, this is what I mean. Like, we talk about a lot on, on Down Round kind of privacy, the notions of privacy and our privacy obviously continually being like trodden on and stepped on into the ground. But like, and I, as I've said before, maybe I'm the ultimate black pill. People have problems with black pill because like, oh, why not imagine a better world? And it's like, no give it up we've lost our privacy like that is gone if someone wants to track you around they can track you don't around. imagine a better word imagine a uh, a world with a higher market cap <laughs> imagine a world that's the only thing that you can do to be safe and provide for you and your family is to trot on other people 
because that's where we're at, folks. Floor of the jungle, baby. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs>Hey, Raph. Hey, James. Did you know that you can get an extra episode of Down Round every single week Mm -hmm. on top of the one that you're already getting? Yeah, I knew that. Well, obviously you know, but the person is like, I'm using you as a vessel to explain. Sorry, I'm the listener. No, go on, tell me more, James. How much does it cost? A mere $7 a month, Raph. Okay, where do I go to find out more about this? You go to downround.net. Okay, I want it. Well, I'm sure you do. I feel like I'm missing out by not having it. Exactly. No ads. Second episode per week. And a few other little goodies that are coming down the pipeline as well. Head to downround.net. Downround.net. And sign up to Downround Premium.